It's supposed to be intro day. I'm glad we got some all old timers here. <laughs> but we're going to talk about central integrated state and transdermal degeneration. Um, these are pretty much cornerstone in our understanding of functional neurology. And to me, the way I look at it is transdermal degeneration is basically the subluxation of fun functional neurology. I don't know if that's fair to say, but that's what we're going after. We're trying to increase the integration in these areas. So central integrated state is basically the net effect of all the excitatory and inhibitory synapses going on on a single neuron at a single time, which means that here's your neuron, and he's going to have a whole bunch of things coming in at him all the time. So it's kind of a measure of all of that together. So I, you can kind of think of like a motor humming, and every time these are synapsing, they're giving it juice, but when they start turning off, it starts humming a little bit low. And, central integrated state goes down. So you can start thinking about what's like the central integrated state of one cerebral cortex versus the other. Is one coming higher than the other? And then we start getting into hemisphericity, which is an imbalance in the central integrated state of each hemisphere. So this is more vocabulary to me than how we actually use it. But when you start getting into transneural degeneration, what you're going to say is, well, you're lowering the central integrative state, you have less synapses coming onto this neuron, so this one is inactive, this one is inactive, and now he's just not getting the stimulus that he's used to. So what happens is he starts declining, he's just activated less. And whether you activate this guy by excitation or inhibition, it's gonna activate this guy and it's gonna keep him alive, keep him making proteins, excitatory or inhibitory. But when you cut out, all stimulus, he starts going into decline. So when he goes into decline, he's not going to be making as many proteins as he's used to. So these proteins are what keep the negative charge inside the cell, okay? He's making anionic proteins to keep the negative inside, and when he's not being activated because he's a lower central integrated state, he enters a state of transdermal degeneration, which means across neurons. So across neurons, and he starts degenerating. So now that he's not making all these proteins, he becomes more unstable, basically, and things start happening that are bad. So he'll have decreased ATP production. He's going to have nuclear swelling, so he's going to get larger. He's going to have failure of the sodium potassium pumps. And he's going to have a higher resting potential. That's the big key here is a higher resting potential. So when we start thinking about how do we activate this guy, well, his normal resting is at negative, negative 65, and we need to get him up to, what, negative 55 to get that action potential. Well, since he's not making his anionic proteins, he's hanging out here at negative 60. So, what, so that starts having implications that we can start measuring and looking at our patients in. So since he's doing that, he's going to be quicker to summate. So this guy's got TND, right? He's going to be quicker to summate, which means I'm going to activate him, and boom, he's already alive. Like He doesn't have to start building up from negative 65 to get to that action potential. He's there quickly. And then what happens is he's going to be quick to fatigue. Quick to fatigue. And that's because he's got less ATP, so he can't keep running, he can't keep firing, because he just doesn't have the ATP. And what happens is when you keep activating this guy who's sick with TND, he's going to fail and he might die, he might go into long-term depression, bad stuff is going to happen. Now this guy isn't going to work. And, and this whole idea of both of these applied to a neuron, you can extrapolate it to a nucleus, a small group of neurons that are all doing the same thing functionally. So when we start thinking about, like, uh, let's say the interposed nucleus of the left cerebellum, what does he do? He controls coordination of the elbow, the shoulder girdle, the hip, the left knee. And what happens is, normally he's healthy, he's got a high central integrated state, he's receiving afferents from the knee, from the arm, keeping him alive, telling him what to do. But then, let's say you splint the knee for a couple weeks because you broke your femur and you have to cast it, right? Now you're not going to be generating afferents up to that interposed nucleus, and the guy's not going to be getting 
the input he needs. So his central integrated state starts going down. I'm just saying that's like the health of the neuron. It's an AKA, that's how I understand it. Now that he's not getting that much input, he starts losing the excitatory or inhibitory synapses on him, and he starts decreasing, he starts going into TND. He just starts going into depression. <coughs> and what happens is now he's not making the machinery he needs, and now he gets unstable. And when he's unstable, he's gonna be quick to summate, quick to fatigue. So now we're gonna try and use coordination of the shoulder. Let's say we're gonna throw a baseball, right? And that's gonna be activating this nucleus we're talking about. I mean, your first pitch is gonna be great because it doesn't take a lot to get that guy activated. But then your second pitch is gonna be crap and your third pitch you're not gonna be able to throw because he'll have failed and crapped out already. So that's what we look for in TND. And we can start looking for transneural degeneration all over the brain. So one way we do it is we look in the eyes for TND of the mesencephalon. Why do we do that? Is because when you know the anatomy, cranial nerve three, which controls the pupillary constriction, comes from the mesencephalon, and it's activated by afferents from the pupillary light reflex through cranial nerve two. So I'm gonna go ahead and shine a light in JP's left eye. And when I'm looking at his right eye, we always do this contralaterally, right? And what I see is his right eye goes it's got a nice gradual contraction, and it's able to hold it there, and that's what we want. And then slowly it starts releasing. That's going to be a healthy response. It took a little while to build it up from negative 65, 55, because he's getting boom, boom, boom from the light, activating, activating. Okay, there's my activation. You get the action potential, you get pupillary constriction. And I go ahead and shine the other eye, right? What I see is that pupil goes tight really fast, and then it just releases. It was quick to fatigue, and then it was quick to, or quick to smate, and then quick to fatigue. Contracts really quickly, but let's go really quickly. And now we can start thinking, maybe he's got TND of his left mesencephalon, which is providing presynaptic drive to make that pupillary constriction. We can do it for the cerebellum. So the way, or we can do it for alpha motor neurons. Um, can you come here for one second? And then sit down. So go like this for me. So we're gonna be testing his extensor muscles, right? Which are activated by alpha motor neurons in the spinal cord, which are getting their input from the reticular spinal. So go like this and resist. So push, 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 and there it goes, it fails. So he was really strong at first, quick to summate, boom, 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 and then he failed really quick. Let's try it on the other side. And resist, 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 this. He didn't fatigue. So now we can see a difference from side to side. Thanks, buddy. And so what can we do is now, is that a window into transneural degeneration of his reticular spinal tract on the right side, which is controlling its lateral extensor dome? Maybe. We'll have to test other things. We do it with reflexes. So patellar and knee reflex, take the patella hammer, and you hit it, and boom, huge reflex, right? And you keep doing it, and then no reflex. And then we can start saying, wow, that's got the properties of TND. So we look for this all over the brain. And, and different functional areas, if you know what they do, you can start testing their functions and then start seeing if you see signs of TND. And so in functional neurology, that's basically one of our goals, is to look for transdermal degeneration. And when we see it, we see these two key characteristics, we want to start inputting it. So what happens is now we're going to input this guy. Like I said, his mesencephalon was weak, right? That's why it, it did that. And what we can do is now we'll try a light therapy. And by shining light into that mesencephalon, I'm activating it, and I would expect pupillary constriction. So I just added an afferent, right, for a presynaptic excitation to this guy. And then let's try another mesencephalic activity. What's a good mesencephalic activity? Uh, yeah, we could do convergence testing, because that's testing cranial nerve 3, which is in the mesencephalon. So by giving him convergence exercises, boom, we're hitting this guy again. And so now we're raising the central integrative state of this group of neurons by inputting them, inputting them, and inputting them. Now they start making more proteins, boom. His resting potential starts going down. He starts getting healthier again. Now that he's getting healthier again, all the machinery that he's making keeps going up and he's able to have normal function in that group of nuclei. So that's 
a very basic idea of how I look at functional neurology is we're going to test all over the place and we might see transneural degeneration of the right cerebellum and that's going to be played out and break down coordination quickly in his right side which is controlled by that by that so how do we so yeah Ugh. so if you have like breakdown of this guy now and he's not activating what is he feeding right so if your right cerebral cortex fires hard into your left cerebellum you've got transneural degeneration of your right cerebral cortex could that lead to a loss of presynaptic drive to the left cerebellum and then result in more TND of the left cerebellum. We call this diastasis, and we'll get into this in a couple weeks, but that's the idea, is can one area with TND start causing TND in another area that it's feeding? And then you get a whole breakdown cascade all throughout the brain. And what happens is you work backwards, you work backwards until you find that original source, you rehab it with neurology, exercises, adjustments, and you start getting it healthy again, starts working better. So that's CIS and TND in a nutshell. Cool? Cool. The, like these key concepts of functional neurology, these are all 801 neuron theory. I think about them still every single day because they're going to play into how we look at different parts of the body, right? How we look at different parts of the brain. So how can we look at TND in the pawns, right? Well, what does the pawns control? And that's going to be like mid-brain stem, right? You're going to have cranial nerves 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 comes out of the medulla, right? 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 doesn't really have any motoric output, but 5 does. 5 has mastication. And let's say whenever they chew gum, it starts burning on their right TMJ, right? Maybe that's because this side's starting to fatigue and fail out a little bit faster. So we start looking at the pawns on that side, that's feeding that side, and that's gonna be ipsilateral. And then we can start looking at other things in the pawns on that side and see if they start correlating. That's the thing is, it's never one thing in functional neurology, correlate things, correlate things. So just because I saw that one people do that, doesn't mean he has TND on that side. Could mean a whole bunch of things. But it's just a window into that, and then we start correlating with other things. So if his convergence fails, or his pupillary light reflex fails really quickly, and then I do convergence, and his eye comes in really fast and then fails, that's going to be another sign of TND. And now we just have two things that are correlating on that right mesencephalon. Make sense? Make sense? Okay. 